Hey everyone, thank you guys for checking out another one of our videos. This is the Optimized Web Media Podcast and we are currently on YouTube Podcast, also Spotify and Apple Podcast. So whichever platform you're listening to or watching us on, we appreciate your time. And with that said, let's get straight into this video and podcast. So I wanted to uh, go over a couple things. We What we want to do is we want to get you up to speed with respect to digital marketing. It's always important to stay on top of things because the industry is constantly evolving and especially with AI, you know, it's definitely impacting a lot of things with respect to digital marketing. So, you know, uh, hopefully we can provide you with a lot, you know, the things that uh, you need uh, to stay current with how things are impacting digital marketing as a whole. So I, you know, we particularly like to pull content from searchenginejournal.com as well as searchenginland.com. And uh, there's a lot of great insights in terms of, you know, uh, you know what's kind of new in, in the industry and what how things are kind of shaking up with respect to SEO, PPC, and digital marketing, social media marketing. So this article is titled, How New Chrome AI Feature Challenges SEO to Evolve. Because as we know, uh, especially with OpenAI's ChatGPT, it had actually changed m- many things drastically with respect to digital marketing, particularly in the space of copywriting, content writing, and SEO. You can put in certain prompts to write articles for you. Now, as we know, you can't just copy and paste content from you know, ChatGPT directly into your blog posts, but you know, the, there's a number of other things that you need to do to ensure that the content is worded in a way that has natural human language form, format and also it aligns with you know, brand and voice, right? And so, so the new Chrome AI history feature underscores that AI is diversifying traffic and the importance of evolving SEO to keep up. So, a Google Chrome engineer published a LinkedIn post outlining the new Chrome AI history feature and the signals it uses to surface previously visited sites. So the post illustrates that natural language browser history search could become a traffic source and SEO must evolve in response. So. The history of search powered by AI, Google recently announced a new opt-in feature in Chrome that gives users the benefit of AI to search through their browser history and find a page that they have previously visited. This makes it easier for a site that has previously been visited to obtain another visit from that same person. And Chrome AI history searches page content. Chrome engineering leader Addy wrote a description of the new Chrome AI history feature that contained some undocumented information about how it works, which shows how text and images are used as a data source as data sources for the AI to identify a site that a user has previously visited. So what does that mean that so what does it mean that the word England was only mentioned in an image. He doesn't specifically say that the word wasn't da 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 da. Okay, so yeah, um, not too useful there, but if you see the video on our YouTube channel, you can actually see an image of the AI search results showing multiple pages in the results. And so this will, you know, perhaps in the future or in the near future, impact the way that content would be delivered on Google search. So let's get into the takeaways. Chrome AI search enables repeat visitors through natural language searches. But when users search with simple text, Chrome will default to a simple keyword matching to the page title and URL. So exact keywords are not necessary. URLs are not necessary. Short, simple text is matched via title tag and URL. Keywords in the title tag and URL that match to how users will remember the site, the topic can still be important. So the ability to rate results 
shows that this feature will continue to evolve. And so, you know, definitely, you know, we'll be on, stay on top of this, you know, considering that, you know, SEO is a big component of our consult, consulting services that we, we provide at Optimizer Media. So the other next article is called YouTube rolls out new shorts thumbnail editing features. So YouTube launches a new shorts thumbnail editing features, allowing creators to add text and filters on mobile devices post upload. So this is really nice because, you know, you definitely want to, you know, if you want to step up your YouTube game, especially on the short side, you know, similar to the long sh format content, you want to make sure that you have a solid thumbnail, right? So the highlight here is that YouTube adds text and filter options for shorts thumbnails. Post upload thumbnail editing now available on mobile and custom thumbnails only show in specific YouTube sections, not main shorts feed. So where shorts thumbnails will display, uh, while these customized thumbnails won't appear in the primary shorts feed, they will be visible in several key areas, including the search results, hashtag pages, audio pivot pages, creator channels, home and subscription feeds. So I wanted to get into um, this next article here. It is called Google's August Core Update Rollo Completed. Uh, just because we're already in the beginning of September now. And so as uh, mentioned in a previous podcast that Google was rolling out an August Core Update. And so uh, Google does this primarily to improve the, the user experience of its search engine, right? And so uh, it, this article mentions that Google confirms that the core update has finished rolling out, taking 19 days to complete the highlights. Google's August core update is now fully rolled out and sites must prioritize high quality, generally helpful content over search optimization tactics. Regaining lost rankings may require long-term substantial substantive improvements and waiting for future updates. So if you have a website that has experienced significant fluctuations with respect to the, uh, your organic search rankings, then it may have been impacted by Google's August core updates. So this is a PPC related content. So Google Ads introduces new masthead format requirements page. So Google's new format consolidated masthead format requirements Page centralization centralizes guidelines for masthead ads on YouTube and Google TV. So Google will launch a new consolidated resource on October 3rd called Masthead Formats Requirements. This new page will streamline all requirements for masthead ads across YouTube and Google TV, providing a centralized reference point for advertisers. Why we care. While the specific requirements for YouTube masthead ads remain unchanged, this move to consolidate guidelines into one location simplifies the process for advertisers ensuring compliance with these requirements is crucial as non-compliant ads will not be eligible to serve as masthead ads. All right, so let's see here. Google search testing new display for forum content. So this new user interface shows top comments and related discussions around that forum search results snippet. So Google is testing a new display and user interface for forum content within its search results. Uh, they're testing a new display for forum content when it appears in search results allowing people to quickly view top comments and related discussions to help them find useful information and dig deeper, a Google spokesperson told them. So no impact on rankings and why we care like Google doesn't show enough form content Reddit in the search results. Google is now testing showing this content with new features. Google will show the top, com top comments and related comments for these form results. 
So this next one is a PPC related article, Google ads to upgrade video action campaigns to demand gen in 2025. So in quarter two of 2025, Google ads will upgrade VAC to demand gen. So video action campaigns, offering advertisers expanded reach, creative flexibility and enhanced targeting. So this is rolling out, let's see here. So. So now advertisers are advised to start running demand gen campaigns and explore its advanced features. In early 2025, Google will launch a migration tool for manual upgrades from VAC to demand gen. And Google, in March 2025, Google Ads will disable creation of new video ads campaigns, sorry, video actions campaigns. And Q2 2025, automatic upgrades of all remaining VACs to, to demand gen will occur. So this next article I want to get into is called Google Trends Email Subscriptions to Stop Working on October, 20, October 29th. So this comes shortly after Google updated the user interface for the trending now results. So Google Trends will stop sending email for subscription uh, you set up within Google Trends. Uh, Google said it is turning down the email subscription service as a October 29, 2024. Instead, Google says you should use RS feeds to check the site manually for those results. All right, so the next one is SEO related. So will ChatGPT be the new Google? The future of search and information retrieval. A deep dive into how AI is disrupting search engines and its impact on SEO digital marketing, and the future of information access. So this is a very important article, um, just because we, all, as mentioned earlier in this podcast, that the AI is, technology is real, and it's coming for digital marketing and SEO. And so you want to stay on top of things and uh, evolve accordingly, right? So with the emergence of uh, conversational AI models like ChatGPT, there is an increasingly loud debate about how the future of search and information retrieval could evolve. Uh, traditional search engines like Google have long been the primary method for accessing, assessing, accessing information on the web. Now advanced AI models offer a new approach to finding the, and retrieving information. So as we know, the traditional search engine model uh, involves keyword-based uh, searching page rankings, ad integration, and wide data access. Uh, the rise of conversation AI, ChatGPT, has blurred the lines between man and machine, moving toward interactive, even subtle information retrieval. So comparing ChatGPT and traditional search engines, search position, precision and depth. So traditional search engines are very good at being precise and wide, retaining many different results. Um, contrast that with ChatGPT, which essentially contains richness through interaction. So it won't provide you with an avalanche of results like keyword search, but it will give you detailed descriptions, summaries, and recommendations on specific queries. It's a deep tool for a complex query where sense and context come into play. So things like user experience, limitations, and challenges um, are still uh, kind of a thing with respect to ChatGPT. Uh, impact on SEO and search marketers. So shift in search strategies. Uh, SEO has traditionally focused on optimizing content to rank highly in search engine results pages, uh, SERPs. This involves keyword optimiz optimization, back backlink building, and ensuring high quality relevant content. However, with the introduction of, of conversational AI, SEO strategies must evolve to meet the demands of the new tools, natural language optimization, answering specific questions and enhance content strategy. New opportunities for search marketers, personalized marketing campaigns, uh, content for conversational interfaces, real time user engagement. The future of information retrieval will be a hybrid search model with hybrid search models, improved AI training, regulation and ethical considerations and redefining search how ChatGPT is challenging traditional search. So. Though ChatGPT and other conversational AI models will make a huge impact on the future of search and informational retrieval, traditional search engines like Google will still hold dominance 
and that won't change anytime soon. Um, other, other articles that's generative AI save time in PPC, unpack the benefits and limitations of using generative AI in PPC. And so we've actually seen this in things like Google Ads with its Performance Max campaigns. In addition to that, even social media ads such as Facebook and Instagram ads on Meta, it's now leveraging more AI to help you generate you know, targeted content, you know, ads and within its ad campaign. So we do find that it's actually getting a lot better. So definitely, you know, if you're not running any, a, you know, performance max ad campaigns, I we highly recommend that you do so on Google ads. Uh, the next article, Microsoft advertising shares six latest public product uh, updates. So Microsoft shared updates related to display ads, video ads, CTV, performance max, and bid strategy. Um, so Bing ads, Microsoft Bing ads, ha- also has kind of AI integration with this Performance Max campaigns. Uh, similar to Google Ads, we also recommend you know businesses to also create Performance Max campaigns as well. We find that having those in addition to the search ad campaigns really complement each other really well. With that said, um, that's it, guys. Uh, I want to thank you guys very much for tuning in to our latest podcast. Uh, you guys are now up to date in the world of digital marketing, and we'll see you guys all in the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye now.